I'm a professional mathematician and I'm going to explain to you why this operation and this operation, which is just multiplication, are actually the same thing. And this is not a gimmick. It's just like if you think about ice as water, it is liquid water in disguise. They're not the same thing, liquid water and ice, but they are the same thing in disguise. And I'm going to explain a very abstract mathematical idea that shows why multiplication and this arithmetic operation are the same in disguise. What does this operation mean, first of all? So what it means, to give you a simple example, if you take 5 star 3, it basically combines two numbers and spits out a third, just like multiplication does. So 5 star 3 is going to equal to 5 plus 3 plus 5 times 3, which is just equal to 23. That's what this operation does. In the same way, you can multiply 5 and 3 on this side, and you get 15. Of course, 15 and 23 are not the same, but these two operations are the same in disguise. And we're going to il illustrate a fundamental subject of mathematical group theory in the process of studying this. So what is cool about this operation? The cool thing is it satisfies a number of fundamental laws, which is what makes it into what is cal called a group in mathematics, just like multiplication. And I'm going to explain what that looks like right now. So first of all, we can think about multiplication as an operation on the non-zero numbers. So what this means is I take the number line, which is all real numbers, and I just delete zero, okay? And I'll explain why I delete zero very soon, okay? That's going to be pretty important. So if we look at that, then this operation of multiplication has a number of fundamental properties. The first property is called closure. If you take two non-zero numbers A and B, the product is also going to be non-zero, okay? That is an important property that says that non-zero numbers live in their own ecosystem. If you multiply two of them, you still stay in that ecosystem. That is why we call it closure, it is closed, okay? In the same way, we can look at this operation, and this is also going to be super cool, and something I'll explain very soon, is that if you delete minus one, okay? Minus one is the analog of zero. If you delete minus one, so you take the number line and you remove minus one, it also satisfies this property of closure that if a and b are not equal to minus one, then a star b is not equal to minus one. This is something I encourage you to check while you're watching this video. And I have a companion on, of this video where I study this operation in depth, okay? You can watch that after this one to really solidify your understanding of mathematical group theory. But you can verify these properties. I'm just going to show you parallels for now, okay? Because we're going to then explain why these two are the same. So the next property of multiplication is a fundamental property we take for granted called associativity. What it says is that when you multiply three numbers, A, B, and C, there is no ambiguity in that. For example, I could multiply B and C first and then multiply A, or I could multiply A and B first and then multiply C, but we don't think twice about this in day-to-day -day life. We can do it either way. And that's what is called associativity. It is not true for all operations, a very special property, even though it seems totally obvious, okay? But it is one of the axioms of a mathematical group, which is what multiplication of non-zero numbers is. And I'll explain that as we go through the axioms. Similarly, for this arithmetic operation star, you also have associativity, and this is a lot less obvious, that A star B star C is equal to A star B star C. Again, this is something I encourage you, you know, you can actually calculate both sides. Do the B and C operation, then do it on A, and it's going to be the same as A and B, and then doing C. And I've done that in my companion video, so you can watch that after this to really see it, but I'm just showing you parallels for now before I show you why they're the same in disguise. Now the third property of multiplication is that it has what is called an identity. This is very fundamental. There is a special number that if you multiply that number with X, you always get back X. And that number, of course, is one. Okay, so this is what is called a multiplicative identity that x star one is equal to, and this is times here, x times one is equal to x is equal to one times x. Okay, for all non-zero numbers x. That is what we call one as being a multiplicative identity, which is the third group axiom. And similarly, on this side, um, we have an identity here, and the identity is not one, because if you take a star one, you get a plus one plus a. That doesn't look a lot like one, does it? But on the other hand, it is actually zero. It's pretty weird. A star zero is actually going to equal to A is equal to zero star A. And this is something we can just see, right? If you write B equals zero in this equation, you get A plus zero plus A times zero, which is just A. 
Okay, so zero is a multiplicative identity for this operation, just like one is an identity for this operation. And the fourth property, which is what completes the structure of a group in mathematics, okay, is you have closure, associativity, identity, and you have inverses. And this is why we're deleting zero. An inverse is something that if I give you a number x, I can al always multiply x by something to get the identity, which is one. And that is, of course, one over x. So every x has a multiplicative inverse, which we call one over x. Then when you multiply that with x, we get one. And this is where you need to assume x is non-zero because you cannot make sense of one over zero. Zero does not have a multiplicative identity because zero times everything is zero. So zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse because of that. That's what I meant. So here you're going to get this is going to be one over x times x. And I'm just saying that the order of operation doesn't matter here. Okay, that's technicality because these operations are what are called commutative. A, B, and B, A are the same. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. It's actually true for this one too. Um, you, you have an inverse and the inverse is something super wild. Okay, the inverse, and in my companion video I explain how to derive this, the inverse of A is something, there is always an inverse, so that if A is not equal to minus one, okay, minus one doesn't have an inverse, just like zero doesn't have an inverse there. But if A is not equal to minus one, then there is this thing called A inverse, which is defined in terms of A, and you'll have to watch my companion video to see it. There's something, let's call it A prime, so that A star A prime is going to equal to zero, which is going to equal to A prime star A. Okay, so there is this inverse so long as a is not equal to minus one. Okay, and this is why these two structures are both called groups. And what I'm going to show you is these groups are actually the same thing, which in math we say are isomorphic groups. There is a way of disguising multiplication to get this operation here. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that disguise is right now. So let's get into that. All right, board's empty now, so let's see what the disguise is. So as I said, this operation is on what we call r minus minus one, which is just the number line with minus one deleted from it, okay? And then multiplication, we're thinking of it as an operation on r minus zero, which is just the number line with zero deleted from it. So we have r minus zero is this, which is the number line with zero deleted from it. And the reason we're deleting zero and minus one is in both cases, we want everything to have an inverse, okay? So that's the reason we're doing that. So these are what are called groups. Now here's the disguise, okay? I'm going to define a function. So it has an input here and an output here that is going to disguise this operation and turn it into multiplication, okay? And what is that function? The function is going to be f of x is going to equal to x plus one. And this is going to be so beautiful. Notice what happens with f of x equals x plus one. First of all, it is a function from this to this, because any number that's not equal to minus one, you add one to it, the result will be not equal to zero. Okay, so it's nicely translating the number line by one to the right. Now what we observe is the following. Suppose we take a and b here. Okay, so we take a, it becomes, the disguise of a becomes a plus one on the right hand side. Okay, that is our disguise. We're thinking of A as secretly A plus one. Okay, and we'll get to why this is a disguise, why, what happens with this disguise, okay? Similarly, B is going to become B plus one. Now what happens if I multiply the results here? Okay, so I've disguised A and B, and multiply their disguises together, A plus one and B plus one, what happens, and remember, this is equal to f of a and this is equal to f of b. Well, what happens is that if you multiply them together, you get a plus one times b plus one, right? So you get a plus one times b plus one, which is nothing other than a plus b plus a b plus one. That's what we get. If you just expand that out, you get that. Now here's really the cool thing, that this is actually the disguise of something on the left-hand side. What is it the disguise of? Well, remember our disguise was adding one to go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So to go from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, we have to subtract one. Or in other words, what do you need to get on the left-hand side to get this where I've added one to a plus b plus a b? Well, just take a plus b plus a b here and then add one to it. You're going to get your disguised number on the right-hand side. And this is nothing other than a star b. So what this is called, this function, f of x equals x plus one, is basically, it's disguising this operation, this arithmetic operation of star, as just multiplication on the right-hand side. And we can rigorously write this down. And we can rigorously write this down as follows. I'm just going to put this here. Um, it has the following fundamental property that f of a star b is going to equal to f of a 
times f of b. That's what it has. So that means our function f, it's a machine, right? Functions have inputs and outputs. It's a machine that converts a star b to just multiplying f of a and f of b. So the right-hand side is multiplication. The left-hand side is our operation star. This is what is called a group isomorphism. And this all shows it's a group isomorphism because of this property. It literally translates star to multiplication, and it is a one-to-one -one on two function. So it has an inverse function, which is just g of x equals to x minus 1. So if you add 1, you go to, from left to right. You subtract 1, you go from right to left. You're undoing that. Okay? These are inverse functions, and this is what it means to say that these two operations are actually the same thing. They're isomorphic groups, and this is an introduction to group theory for everyone, you know, for pre-calculus students, basically. And if you're loving this and you want to understand this operation a bit more, because there are some points I didn't explain in exact detail, check out my video. It's going to pop up on the screen. It studies this operation and introduces you to a group again, so you can really solidify in just 20 minutes. Think about it. This math is not taught at anything below very advanced undergraduate math level. And in just 20 minutes, this video together with the next one, which is 10 minutes, you can master and get a sense of what groups are. So check me out in that video. And if you're really loving my content, don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you're really, really loving my content, please consider subscribing on Patreon. Small contributions there make a huge difference to my channel. I'm doing everything on my own. I'm a professional mathematician. I balance YouTube on the side. But with the contributions on Patreon, I can really outsource a lot of work, create fun, exciting videos with very exciting visuals, editing work, everything, all with just small contributions over there. So check me out over there, links in the description, and I'll see you in this video or another fun video on my channel that you're going to love over here. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.